Please listen carefully. Well, hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we are part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help us all get focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. Also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office where they sit on a bouncy chair-worthy podcast. Today is Friday, March 18th, 2022. Hello, darling. How are you today? Hi, Summers. I'm, I'm great. I'm well. Yeah? Got my car filled up last night, so I'm happy about that. That's right. That's right. Have listeners heard about Christy's new car yet? I don't think they have. Yeah, I know. I'm going all in in these alternative modes of personal vehicle transportation because I've been the owner of a Leaf, an electric car, and now I am trading that one in for a hydrogen car. I have, I just got a, a Toyota Mirai. Tell me about it. I mean, I know we're going to do, we're going to do like a show focused on cars and, you know, next week or something, but how are you liking it? I know Obviously, like you're an early adopter in a new energy technology. So there's got to be some sort of fits and starts when it comes to getting yeah. that process. You have a new process, a new regiment, um, but you can also drive for longer now. I can drive for longer, which is great. And yes, other electric cars have, have bigger ranges, but this car has a range of like, you know, 240 miles on a full tank. Mm-hmm which is way different than my 90 miles, 80, yeah. 80 miles, 90 miles of I'm really lucky with my leaf. Mm-hmm. Uh, the difference is with my leaf, I could just plug it in at my house all the time. Yes, there was range anxiety, but I didn't have to worry about having a place to charge it. Right. With the hydrogen car, like internal combustion engine, it actually requires a fuel source, which mm-hmm. is hydrogen. And there's limited numbers of stations in California, although those are growing. And in Santa Barbara, right. we only have one station. In Los Angeles, they have a number of them. In San Francisco, a lot. They're building it out. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of controversy over whether this is a smart path to take or whether we should just go all in on on electric fuels. I think that it is definitely a transition fuel off of fossil fuels Mm -hmm. because it it has other benefits than just the lithium-ion batteries. Hydrogen is this amazing resource in terms of an energy storage because it is like gasoline. It just lasts, you know, you don't, you don't have to charge it and then uncharge it. It, You can fill it up. It takes four minutes, just like a regular gas pump. However, there's some fits and starts. The, so the station here in Santa Barbara, after I got the car, it was down for four days Mm -hmm. and it's, it's still up and down right now. And so I was getting a little little anxious. I only had like 50 mile range yesterday. And then I got a note that it was open again. And I, so I raced over there to fill up my car right. and ended up meeting a, another owner and the technician who were both really nice people. I'm in this community of trailblazing hydrogen car owners. Right. Right. Of these early adopters. Yeah. And- yeah. You know, it's interesting. So uh, you mentioned that there is controversy on whether or not we should all go all in on electric vehicles or, you know, one thing that you and I know, and I think prevailing wisdom has to come alongside with is that there is not one solution for everything. And putting all of our eggs in the fossil fuel basket or all of our eggs in the electricity basket or all of our eggs in the, you know, hydrogen basket is just not good planning. There are individual structural regional requirements for all of these different forms of energy and the opportunity to explore alternative energies and ensure that the supply chain for these energies is is the greenest path possible is really the solution. So I, like you, I'm never interested in arguments that are adamant about one position because I do not believe that that is the solution of the future. And I think that as a humanity and as a culture, we need to be open to discussion as opposed to closed with conviction because that's how we're going to make this world better. It's not Taoist, right? There's not all big truths. There's just a ton of little truths. And while I don't think, you know, where I live, that vehicle, that fuel opportunity is not something I could pursue right. at the moment, right? Like yeah, simply it's couldn't. not. An electric vehicle may makes better sense where I live, but 
I don't live in a highly localized urban environment that can have multiple fuel stations. You know, I live in a different environment. So yeah. Anyway, I am excited. And guys, like we're going to do a car week here, maybe not a whole week, but like a car day on the Optimist Daily. (laughs) I come from a car loving family. Christy is a tech loving girl. So uh, I think this is an exciting, exciting chapter for us, the Optimist Daily. So thank you for being a hydrogen trailblazer. Well, we'll see. I'll let people know how it goes. Right now, I'm loving it. Good. Good. (laughs) Well, you know what else I'm loving? And I was actually thinking about it this morning. Another new thing, by the way, Mm -hmm. that is taking over, and there's lots of controversy over whether it's a better system or Mm -hmm. not, which is work from home. Work from home. Exactly. So work from home, I was thinking today, you know, even dropping my daughter off at school, the mask requirements for adults in the classrooms has been dropped. It was so nice to see the teacher's faces. And as I was driving back to my home office, I thought, you know, the next level on this, the next step on this is is whether or not we really are going to be lifting work from home requirements or whether or not people are going to be willing to. I know that my life is better with work from home. I have a more expansive experience because I can be more present for my children and my job as long as my house doesn't break. But that's another story. However, some of the ergonomic wisdom that we learned in offices that helped protect people's bodies has largely been abandoned in the work from home world. So the headline that I am reading today is a massage therapist advice on work from home without hurting your back. Now, lots and lots and lots and lots of people have been noticing pain in their middle and upper backs as we've moved into work from home. This is wisdom gleaned from a massage therapist and treatment trainer, Polly Brash, who has reported that postural problems are on the rise. Now, you know, of course, posture problems have been around for a long time, but they are certainly on the rise during the pandemic, and a large part of that is due to work from home. Now, the actual working from home is not the problem. Right. Why is there a problem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's how they're sitting. It's where they're sitting. Using laptops, sitting cross-legged on a comfy sofa or while lying in bed with your back against a headboard, even sitting in that very attractive uh, home office chair that is perhaps not ergonomic. Now, repeatedly putting yourself in these positions for weeks on end can seriously impact your health. Brash is quoted as saying, postural health plays an integral part in our health and wellness. Proper posture keeps blood and lymph moving. It also helps prevent a sore back from slouching and the imbalances created. Christy, is there uh, anywhere on your body that is particularly achy these days? Well, uh, if I don't move, yes, my hips get a little bit sore. My shoulder, especially my right, my right side, I, I can, my neck and right you shoulder get it. a little stiff, you know? So, and I think that's because if I don't move enough in a day, it certainly impacts me. I think one thing that's interesting here is a lot of offices have been designed with uh, like under OSHA standards, right? So they Mm -hmm. they want their workers to sit in the right kind of chairs, the right kind of desks, the right height. And when you move home, you kind of are sitting at your kitchen table, you're using whatever chair happens to be around, you're sitting in your sofa, your bed. And also maybe you don't have as much need to get up and go like you don't walk down the street to get a to go to the coffee shop you don't go Mm -hmm. uh you you know you don't walk down the hall to the bathroom yeah (laughs) well we exactly we've we've become increasingly stationary and so it's it's uh it's pertinent that you mentioned that your right side is particularly tight because the kind of the following list are some of the complaints that people are finding Right. So dominant side tightness for me, that's my right side. This is, uh, and, and for you, this is resulting in muscles that are causing headache, stiff shoulders and neck area. A big part of that is how we're using our mouse, how we're using our keyboard. Stiff trapezoids and shoulders is coming from having too high or low of a desk, angling your head in the wrong direction. After eight or more hours on a computer, as you've been doing basically micro reps, making the muscles fatigued and prone to soreness and injuries. And then good old back and butt pain, which I suffer from is low back pain, particularly because I am often picking up a 38 pound toddler who insists up, 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 carry me mommy after having been sitting improperly in a chair for quite some time. It's funny because today I'm actually recording this while sitting on my good old exercise ball as a chair in an effort to improve posture. Some of the tips that are in this article include 
flat surface at elbow level for your desk. Make sure your elbows are at a 90 degree angle and that they're bent at a 45 to 90 degree angle, keeping the wrists and hands in alignment. Taking the burden off shoulders and wrists allow for good blood and lymph flow. Flat feet on the floor and knees at 90 degrees. Your chair height should allow your feet to sit flat on the ground. This is all about 45 to 90 degrees everywhere. And this sounds obvious, but sit upright. Have your hips and glutes in the back of the seat. The backrest, if you have one, should touch your back more as a reminder to sit up than to fully relax into it. There's a few other exercises and tips in this article on the Optimist Daily, things you can do. you know, ball, uh, find an exercise ball, hop into that. But uh, this is great, right? It's a good reminder that perhaps some of those aches and pains and exhaustion that we feel does in fact come from how we are sitting in the new work from home world. Let me give one little plug for just having that little tiny stretching practice, which when I do Mm -hmm. that regularly, even if it's five to eight minutes, it makes huge difference in keeping my my glutes stretched out, my hamstrings stretched out and uh, hips open. Yeah, exactly. Shoulders even open. Just sitting here now, I can realize that my, my, my desk is too tall. <laughs> yep. Well, and what I was thinking, Christy, is maybe we include our link to our favorite yoga by Cassandra in this yeah. particular yeah. article or in the show notes. She doesn't know, but we are her biggest fans. So <laughs> anyway, well, I think we're on the health and wellness beat today at Optimist Daily. What are yeah. you interested in sharing? So the article that I wanted to highlight, headline reads, Remote Bolivian Tribe Has Lowest Dementia Rates Worldwide. And this is an, an interesting story. I'm very interested in dementia. I have several people in my who I'm close to who have been suffering or starting that in their aging process. My mom's boyfriend has Alzheimer's. My mom herself is starting to have some uh, dementia, which is, you know... And a lot of people, this is just something that in the Western world, we just kind of think is part of the natural aging process, right? You're going to get it. So you just, Mm -hmm. whether it's young or old, you know, once you get to be in your 80s, of course, everyone has dementia. That's the common wisdom, which is not necessarily true. And what this article is spotlighting is a remote and unique indigenous population in the Bolivian Amazon. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a tribe called the Chimane. Uh, And they've been on scientists and researchers' radar for a while because they, turns out they have almost no case of age-related heart disease. They do not have cardiovascular disease like we do in the Western. And now they have, in 2017, researchers from the the Chimene Health and Life History Project were astonished to realize that the elderly Chimene that, that they had been working with experienced unusually low levels of vascular aging of all sorts. And in a study in the in the Lancet, they reported that the average 80-year-old Chimene demonstrated the same vascular age as a 55-year-old American. So basically, the 80-year-olds were as vascularly healthy as a 55-year-old. And you know, this is averages over, over time. Mm-hmm. So th- then they went further, they were looking at dementia because it seemed like they were pretty low incidence of dementia. So they went in and they did a targeted study with Three or four hundred and thirty-five adults over the age of twenty in the Chimene population, and they had them complete some neurological assessments. And it turns out that of those four hundred thirty-five people, only five cases of the kind of age-related dementia that we see so commonly in like an American population were found, which mm-hmm. re- results presence. in about one one percent in in that population study compared to. The 11% of the equivalent American population known to be living with dementia. You know, so one tenth, less than one tenth of the amount of dementia in this case, in this population. There's another nearby community, the Mostyn community, which also showed very low levels of dementia, even though they live in closer proximity to modern society in Bolivia. So there's something about the lifestyle for sure, but there may also be something about the genetics. These researchers, I think, are more focused on the the lifestyle in the way right. that these populations are working and using their brain. Because one thing that they found is that the Chimene population has demonstrated much lower rates of age-related brain atrophy mm-hmm. compared to Western populations. So their brains don't shrink as much as ours do. 
So everyone's brain does lose some volume as we age, but the Chimene population uh, was 70% slower shrinkage compared to their Western counterparts. And the thing that was also surprising is that it's not that they have super low levels of neuroinflammation. In fact, they have pretty high levels, of, but that's somehow not linked to the brain shrinkage and dementia onset. Whether it's just how they are living, they're living in very social communities, they're using their minds in different ways. They're not sitting on their couches watching Netflix all the time mm-hmm. or... Uh, <laughs> smoking or eating sugar or alcohol. So a thing that is interesting is that these kind of studies investigating older indigenous populations can help us get insight into the ways that our modern Western lifestyles can ultimately damage our health as we age and Mm. help us ask questions about how do we want to best approach living. I'm curious also if, uh, you know, what the lifespan of the Chimane are. And of course, this was based on the, you know, average 80-year-old Chimane is vascularly as healthy as a 55-year-old American. But it'd be interesting to see whether or not they had extended lifespans, whether the neuroinflammation and, you know, obviously, I guess with reduced heart rate and with reduced dementia, it seems like their lifespan is inevitably going to be increased. But it'd be interesting to see like what the correlation is. And then as I'm always very interested in, which is like the happiness index or the sentiment index, do they report higher levels of happiness? And we know that areas that have report higher levels of happiness do have lower levels of dementia and heart disease. So it's that shifting of understanding what happiness is. Yeah, and, that, and that's linked to your social connections as well as your other lifestyle factors. Yeah. The other thing that, I mean, we were joking around maybe that maybe they're using ayahuasca <laughs> Right. Maybe there's something else than that they do, you know, on alternative medication that actually enhances the brain power as mm-hmm. as these folks are aging that might be applicable as well. Well, we don't really know. Right now it's it's correlative and I, I just I think it's interesting because it's it is an, an issue that I I'm concerned about for, you know, lots of people that I love and um even for myself, I was going to say, even now. likely yourself, right? We can all sort of admit yeah. our fear of mortality when we see those we love mm-hmm. aging of things. I know that in my biological family, there is a lot of cancer. And mm-hmm. that is something that I, you know, as I age, I want to make sure that I learn as much as I can about so that I can mm-hmm. reduce it because I want to be here as long as I can for my kiddo. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, my older ones will have me for a lot longer than my youngest one will, unless I can, you know, really work on that. So, I know we all want to keep our brains as long as possible. We want to keep our bodies feeling good as long as possible. And we all all want to drive the best cars we can. So, or not use a car. if Or not. Maybe, you you know, if you don't have to. (laughs) Public Uh, transportation is good too. (laughs) So also today on the Optimist Daily, we kind of have an animal beat and a power beat. This is how we could clean our solar panels without water. The second part of expert approved ways of dealing with bad news. There is a fabric that can hear you, and a Kenyan sanctuary welcomes five mountain bongos. What else do we have, Christy? Well, apparently yellow-bellied marmots stop aging in hibernation. We, so we, that's that one for have... sleep, right? On the other side, <laughs> just go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Rare white wallabies get their color from viral DNA. Hmm, that's cool. That's curious. I want to understand that. Findings from the largest public study on kindness. Why we care about that. Hmm. And check out these Black-owned home decor brands to liven up your space. That and so much more on TheOptimistDaily.com. But that's it for this morning on The Optimist Daily Update. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We promise to keep sharing positive, solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in the changing world and help ensure it is changed for the good. We promise to keep covering current events with accurate, legitimate sources and offering you the kinds of information we all need to chart new paths for all of us. Everybody, please be part of the solution changing consciousness and addressing our world's biggest challenges with a problem-solving mindset by sharing stories from The Optimist Daily with those you love, those who inspire you, and by sharing us on social media, by posting positive reviews on the podcast, and... Of course, by considering becoming an emissary, one of our paid supporters for as little as $5 a month. Thank you, everybody. We super duper appreciate you. Have a marvelous weekend, and we'll be back on Monday with more solutions.